10,600 miles and only used on two trips. This is a, uh, a little Coachman Freelander Micro 20CB here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan just coming in. So uh, the uh, fella bought it to take a retirement trip on Route 66, making all kinds of little stops, didn't want to tow anything. And for that purpose, it was great. Then he took it out on a second trip, and uh, this only has about a 2,000 pound tow capacity, which you have to watch. Some dealers are going to tell you these have a 5K tow rating. That is not accurate. They might have a 5K hitch, but they don't have a 5K tow rating because the chassis doesn't handle that kind of weight. There's a difference there. Um, I'll get more into that as we walk, walk around the outside. But without towing a little chase vehicle behind him, which he didn't want to do, he found out when you're kind of, in a sense, isolated at the campground, um, not being able to see the thing that you want to do that's 10 miles away, well, that was not as much fun, and he didn't want to like get there, find a rental car, deal with that. So he said, you know what? Maybe I just need to step away from a motorhome. Maybe in a little bit here I'll do something in the way of a trailer. Now, this is painfully well kept. I mean exceptionally well kept. Almost every single thing on this has had something done to enhance it. The intention was this guy was going to use this thing a lot more than he did, and he sunk a lot of extra money into it. Let's take a look at all that real quick. Now one of the things we do here at Halet RV is we've got a very generic series of questions where we get a good sense of the shape, care, ownership, maintenance, upkeep of an RV, and this thing has been impeccably well kept. But more importantly, I wanted to kind of take a second to sort of run down all of this stuff and just pan through it so that you can see what we're looking at. Now this is from the factory a carpetless model. The previous owner did go through and uh, actually have cut out and installed some carpet on it. Um, that being said, it's not like it'd be terribly hard to have removed if you'd like to go back to a carpetless model. Of specific, no, I mean, God, there's a lot of things. Like he added the solar, added a 110 water heater um, in series with the standard water heater. Had some special plumbing done on that so that, uh, you know, you can have all kinds of hot water and back-to-back -back showers on this thing. And uh, another big note, is the uh, the spring upgrade on the rear axle for improved ride and handling so it just runs a little bit more smoothly so once again there was just a ton of care maintenance effort love upkeep etc applied to this coach so in a motorhome getting there is as much of a part of the adventure as being there because one of the differences in the motorhome is the moment i turn this key road trip vacation starts so one of the things i always like to do is i like to try on the cab for size and this is one of the first transit chassis I've really had the opportunity to get in and do a video on right here. And very much like the Sprinter or Mercedes chassis you find out there, I, as a big person, I'm 6'2", 3", whatever, 190 to 200 pounds, I'm very happy with the cabin space I get out of this. Now, I got in, and as it's sitting, I was like, this is great. But I, I noticed that, I mean, the pedals are almost too far away for me. So it's, it's very good for bigger folks like me. Now, that being said, pulled this armrest up out of the way. This little pivot right here to, to get back to the, the, the living area, it's not the most comfortable. But given the fact that this is a small mini home, this is something I can totally live with and accept. And if it's that big of a deal to me, if you're a bigger person than me, then just go out the door go around and come in the main entry door. It's not gonna be the end of the world. Another thing I noticed, and you can't really see it from here, and I'll point it out as we go back through, but your backup camera monitor is up here in the position of where you would expect to find a rear view mirror. It's very natural, it's very organic when you're driving. You expect to look up here and see that rear view mirror, and there it is, doing exactly what you think it's going to do. So you never have to like process that. But the shape, the feel, uh, even the location of the um, cruise controls on this, I like how this is laid out. If I'm gonna hop in something and I'm gonna just go touring, traveling all over the place, making stops, this thing is on point. This is fantastic for that kind of use. Recording this right now is probably a bad idea, but I'm getting this thing parked in a position where I can uh, do some better footage on it, and I'm just enjoying the function of that backup camera monitor up there. That is slick. And I mean inside, outside, upside down. This thing is clean, well cared for, well kept, well maintained. You are not inheriting someone else's problems. I think the only thing that might make this RV challenging is the previous owner added so many things to it that a new RVer may actually experience a little bit more of a first-timer learning curve than you would expect um, on a, a more basic stock motorhome from the factory. 
Now, uh, this overhead area converts into a bed there. You can see the ladder is present. And what I also like is you see these little seatbelt clips. There's a little don't roll off the bed grandkids safety net that goes up there. So, again, if you are doing some extra traveling, that's very handy. Now, this is also a very good little buddy camper. If you like to, you know, go to the races or something like that or, uh, you know, uh, tailgating and sporting events, this is a fantastic model for things like that. Now, there, this is what's called an alternative dinette location. What you can do, you see the extra hole in the floor right there, you can actually turn the table so that you can have a lengthways dinette that kind of partitions off the RV so that you're not uh, bleeding up through into the uh, cab area right here that we got to see a little bit sooner. I do want to kind of pan around this, though, so that you can get a, a good idea of just kind of what it looks at <laughs> looks like without me sitting in it. But once again, the extra seating space and comfort that it had for a bigger person like me that is something that with my experience level i can tell you not a lot of uh class c's offer that is a, a very welcome feature in my uh view so uh again previous owner added these overhead struts and you can see uh all the owner's manuals remote controls everything all original present and accounted for um the uh lighting all led all low power usage and everything um, and the uh, kitchen area here, although not the biggest at a first glance, it actually opens up to provide some pretty decent storage. See, you've got those full extension drawers. We have the uh, flip-up countertop extension here, too. Which, first of all, for a little coach, the L-shaped countertop that we have in this already does a pretty good job. But this coming right up flush to the countertop, it really opens this thing up. Now, this is a real smart, I guess the internet phrase is camping hack. But the little metal grates that go on top of your stovetop cover, if you slide them out in transit like this guy did, they're not going to... They're not going to, you know, jingle bang around in transit whatsoever. Um... The uh, overhead cabinet space here, I expected to be a little more shallow. I was pretty happy to see that full depth. And I do like this little sort of face toward you corner cabinet right here next to that nice stainless sink. And that white thing next to the bed, that is that 110 um, virtual on-demand water heater that is uh, uh, lined up in series with the standard RV water heater. So you don't really have to like relearn how that thing works. And when you close those drawers, you see there's actually more cabinet space under the sink itself, which is pretty cool. They just didn't waste anything here. Now, the CB, I think, actually must stand for uh, corner bed, because that's what this one offers. And a little camp or a little coach like this, as it were, there's not much more you can do. But again, they gave you all the storage they could, and the previous owner went through adding those little gas struts to keep those doors held wide open. Normally, you'd have had to head juggle those. Now, um... Also added, uh, which I think is smart, you can see that little handle hanging down right there, maybe for kind of uh, easy climbing in and out of the corner bed. And that foam topper on this mattress is no joke. I put my hand on there and it squishes right in. Over here in the corner, we've got a handy little sort of uh, phone mm, baggy <laughs> net situation with both household and USB outlets right there for uh, mobile charging. Um, now right here, we've got this big closet space this will be the bulk of your um you know personal storage if as it were clothing and whatnot socks underwear drawer with all your hanging storage above and this hanging closet's so tall that you could easily fold some stuff and have on the bottom of the closet and still leave room uh for the hanging things above that so you can have both shirts and pants all stacked up in here little detail thing you'll actually see a magnet catch on this door so that it holds itself open working even through the uh, uh mattress cover right here Simple bathroom, but effective, and I love the fact that there's no tub here. Uh, there's just that easy walk-in shower, and um, now we are in the upper deck of the RV, but I'm 6'2", 6'3"-ish, whatever, as I mentioned before, and I've got plenty of headroom in here, and since the shower is basically floor flush, I don't expect that you're going to have headroom issues in this unless you're like six and a half foot tall or something of that nature. Now, as Coachman does with most of their lamination, below the fiberglass skin, you're actually going to find a layer of material called Asdel. And we're super familiar with this here at Halet RV, being a uh, dealer of Coachman's laminated ultralight products, the Freedom Express and the Apex, respectively. Uh, we know this stuff pretty well. Basically, it's a composite resin material. It is lighter weight, and the material itself cannot rot, mold, mildew. It's a, a good longevity item to have in a coach. And uh, with all the care and maintenance the previous owner put on this, I don't think he ever would have had to worry about it one iota. Um, over here, we've got our 4,000 generator to give this thing, because it says 30 amp service. You can have full function of this RV anywhere you choose. Uh, you can fire that up. 
all your air, your lights, your everything are always going to be good. And the, the little preventative maintenance items, like keeping the bugs from getting inside the furnace or the water heater here, those I like to see. The tires are great. I don't see any weather checking. I don't see any regular wear patterns. Um, you're not inheriting someone else's problems with this one. Have a good day, Phil. Thanks for coming through. One of our uh, uh, toy hauler reps actually came through here. I just wanted to greet him real quick because he was passing on his way out. Now you see these little wings on the back here. What are those things? Basically guys, it's to help um, peel the air that you're displacing with the motorhome, trying to force it back together to give it a little smoother slipstream down the road. Some people feel that will help with your miles per gallon, stability. Um, the people that seem to do it, they seem to swear by it. I've never done it personally, so I can't comment. I guess I'll just kind of leave that up to you. What I do like here, though, is this is a maximum length power awning, and there is LED lighting below it. So uh, they put the, the biggest awning space on this they possibly could. Um, remember, again, we do have a 2,000-pound a tow rating on this. Despite what the hitch may read, that's the tow rating of the coach because where the hitch attaches to the chassis can't support like a 5K tow package. Now you see the spare tire in here has never been touched. And these are some of the carpet remnants from when the previous owner went through and added carpet to it. But one thing I also want to point out is one of the reasons this looks brand new is because it wasn't just stored under a cover. It was stored inside a building under a cover. I mean, not only could the weather not even get to this thing, but a bird couldn't land on it. And there's that big um, inverter that the, the fella added in to be able to, you know, run things when he was off the beaten path. Although that is normally where you would find an outside TV hookup and uh, entertainment station. So, I mean, 100% of everything at the ground level is beyond factory condition, basically. And that trend really continues upstairs as well. And the roof, like everything else in this RV, saw some extra tension. I don't know that there's not a square inch of this thing that hasn't been dressed and pressed and combed and made ready at some point or some way or another. You can see that, uh, again, previous owner added, well, only owner, added the solar system to the roof here. We have a non-crank up down antenna, so you don't have to worry about leaving that up and then flying down the road. You can see we've got the nice uh, vent covers over your uh, bedroom, bathroom, kitchen area vents, so you can have those things open on a rainy day, get some good airflow. And those little windbreaker things that we talked about at the ground level, we've got more of those up here even just to help this thing track and uh, you know trail down the road nicely easily all the seals look good it's not old enough to have a seal problem even if you really lived in sun country so whether it's hitching pieces parts trades financing truck and trailer package deals rv delivery and everything between we do it all here at halet rv of cold water michigan so take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone